You feeling I'm, I'm finna prove motherfuckers wrong. I'm finna get my second chance after you went to jail. I stayed in that place for three years getting prepared for revenge. Not thinking about love. Who are you gonna get revenge against, Mike? Anybody that laughed at me. I was gonna flash my money, my belt, my car, my house, my plane, my boats. Look at me, motherfucker. I'm a god. I'm just a fool. I'm <laughs> just a fool. <laughs> Hey, this is another episode of Hot Boxing. We have a special guest here tonight. This is the brother. man from Houston. This is Trey the Truth. Trey, Yo, welcome. Up, up, Bless us, man. Tell us about you, man. Let's from look. Houston. Yeah, born and raised. Amazing. Son named Houston, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much I love the city. Um, I remember when I first went to Houston, like in what, 85, right? I went to Houston, and so I went to McDonald's to get some food, and I saw these girls coming in, they had these nice tight jeans on, and they had cowboy boots. I never saw no shit like that before. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. They're like the fuck some cowboy boots. I said, "What the fuck?" I only really thought st- white it, people did that. Shit. It's just starting know. to get back around to that. But at first, yeah. we used to hate when people be like, "Man, Texas just country cowboy has a cowboy." Yeah, boot. you changed it though, huh? But you yeah. can take that and make it sexy too. Cause you're never gonna get rid of the cowboy boots. You just gotta flip them some kind of way. Yeah, yeah, that's part. It's part of our culture. Y'all got horses out here a lot. They got, yeah, they got horses in, in California. Some yeah. guys got them up in their, um, up in the mountains and stuff in their house. I don't you know. smoke, truth? No, nah, don't smoke. Oh, the this is beautiful. We gotta That's talk. awesome, dude. This is not offending you. Is nah, it? not okay. at all. I've been around it my whole life and yeah. still do. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, so, Trey Day. Yeah. The mayor of Houston gave you this day. Yeah. They named it Trey Day, <laughs> July 22nd. July 22nd. Um, Tell this, us about it. This is going to be year number 11. So what happens on Trey Day, um, probably for even before I, I got the holiday, you know, they have been watching a lot of stuff I do in the community. So they ended up giving me the day, and it was a day for the whole city to honor me. But what I, at the end of the day, I, I feel like I'm, I'm cool, man. So I switched it and made it a day for us to honor the whole city, you know? So what I do is, it started just one day, but now it got so big, it go to a whole weekend and stuff. All right. So I make awesome. sure I go get the kids, their school supplies, school clothes. Used to be immunization shots, cause I started getting mixed signals about people wanting to immunize their kids mm-hmm. and not, but that um, HIV testing, uh, I rent out a, a big park and I bring all kind of jump lands and different stuff in the Houston we don't see snow so I actually make them come create snow I pay for that I bring camels kangaroos a little bit of a little bit of everything and then I go get all my my homies whether they athletes rappers singers movie stars and I bring them out there and the reason I do that is because a lot of these kids they only see them on YouTube or TV but imagine now they can get out there and go shake somebody like Mike Hand or, or take a picture with them that they probably would have never had money to get into an event with him or or make it there, but now I present them to him face to face. So it just kind of give people hope. So I started doing that, and then it started just making it a whole just charity weekend, just full of everything, and it inspired people in other states and other cities. So I think that's awesome, man. So what do you what, um? Then we're talking about you know your philanthropist. Let's talk about it. What do you see in the future of our youth? Where well, do you see them going? What do you see the um the best the best road to which we should travel? I think, man, and it's crazy because I, I see it from all different angles. With me being from the streets, I understand that lifestyle. And then with me also being mature now and, and, and growing, I can see other outlets. You know, like as opposed to what I would have thought was cool back in the day, nowadays I'd probably pull it on me to the side like, nah, that ain't the move. I don't want like I ain't gonna watch you crash yourself. But one thing I can say about the youth, even, you know, my youngest is my little girl, her name Truth. She, um, 10 months, they so advanced. You know what I'm saying? They a lot, a lot sharper. Te- technology them. makes them advanced. This phone makes them advanced. You know, you don't have to, and when I was a kid, listen, I'm not even long, not even a kid, I'm mature in the 80s. I'm, I'm a grown man. When I want information, I gotta go to a library. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We don't, I mean, they still have it now, but you know, they get no on their phone. I don't even see no purpose for a library. There's no yeah. purpose for a library. What purpose is, unless you want some privacy, 
alone in a room or something. Yeah, because they could put the, the uh, no they could put the books the on the phone now too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's but no um, I, I think man, long as they got solid people, and they don't necessarily even have to be a father. Because I'm, if that's the case, I'm a father to majority of the kids in Houston. It's just a matter of as long as they have somebody solid to guide them and you know check them here and there because. Sometimes when you don't have accountability, you get to wild. You know what I'm saying? Because you you feel like, man, I got to answer to nobody. And sometimes that can spiral into something real bad. So I try and get a hold of as many as I can that got the potential and and show them. You know what I'm saying? They still can do their own thing, but just have somebody to sharpen them up a little. As I was saying um, in the room earlier, say I got a hundred million dollars, I want to give it to this community. What do I do? I want to give it to your community. How, how do you handle that? For me, what, what I, I do, man, and and it's crazy. So, matter of fact, I'm going to ask you your opinion. So mm-hmm. what's the first thing you think if you see somebody helping and they may show it on camera or they may record it? And they show it on camera? Oh, yeah, what, what's the first thing you think? Because it's, it's too – That the is reason informing I'm people that this shit is going on out see, here. See, now you think how I think. You know, right. some people do it just to, to show off. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people – used to be at a point like, oh, I'll do this, and, and you're not supposed to show it. And, and some people, if you know it's not genuine and they're doing it like, ha, ha, look what I've done, no, nah, you're not supposed to. But when you do show it how we show it, we go to, one, and inspire people, and two, and inform people, because guess what, a year, this almost two years since Harvey, I could take these cameras through certain neighborhoods, and there's people who still haven't been helped since that flood hit. Like, mm. they walls tore down. I remember rescuing a lady towards the end of last year. Her and her kids were sleeping in a tent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta think it's a flood, so on the outside of the home, it looked fine. On the inside of the home, they ain't got no walls, they ain't Smell got no like floors, meal do. Man, I remember I rescued, and it's two of us, it's me and my partner, Mr. Ross, it's so crazy. We don't do, this ain't what we do, I don't do no, Saving people, I, I don't build homes. He a DJ, I rap, but we just had the heart for it. Mm-hmm. So I remember it was a a lady who was, um, I believe she just turned ninety, sleeping on a a, a mold infested couch. Everything else in the house tore up, man. We end up taking her, we end up putting her in a a home, a nice facility, rebuilt her home, and brought her back. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of people that be needing help. Still, but, yeah, 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 by far. Wow. And so what happens is like when you get money like that for you to say okay I want to do this with us whatever people give I like to let them two one come be hands on so you can see where your money going to see what's going on but on side of that they're not going to do that rich people not going to be <coughs> hands on like that but see that's those the kind of people you know that's, that's where you got to find the people who are genuine yeah they want to do it because they want people to know but that's good too because yeah. they, they want to get the ego look what I did for these people and stuff that's good because they're getting the money that's good if they want to do it for their ego you know it's crazy because I, I didn't the fact that you think exactly how I think about certain situations so people used to be like well what about if they doing it just for attention is wrong and in my mind yeah maybe maybe for morals and principles but at the same time People still getting the help they They're need. Getting the help, I agree. Yeah. Man, you know, I I think one of the coldest things somebody told me in the process, he was like, "Man, no, a dude, I was out there. Um, we went and, you know, we would go to apartment complex to take them food, clothes, water, diapers, everything. And dude, like, man, if you wouldn't have came today, the fact that you coming to help, if I wouldn't have found help today." Bro, I literally is planning on crashing myself out robbing the bank and making sure now my listen, family was okay. Now, I'm that guy. My family are those guys. My friends is that guy right there. So if something happened like the black, in 1977, we had a blackout in New York City. What do you think? You think we're going to people's houses? No, we're robbing. We're crashing windows. We're breaking in houses. We're breaking in stores. That's just what it is. We're those guys that have nothing and never going to get anything. They cut off our welfare, cut off our water, cut off our heat. We're animals. Yeah, and and it's like they don't. Under, it's when you get in that, you're in survival mode. So when you go in survival mode, by any means necessary, you got to do whatever you got to do to feed. Even before you feed yourself, to feed your family, if you got kids. Yeah, you know no what I'm doubt about it. It's just a totally different feeling. Everybody's like chaos. Yeah. Everybody's going for themselves. It's a lot more. It's a lot more easier now than it it was back then. But it, it's still there because you still got. You got so many different situations. It may be a, a felon who came home that can't go get an apartment, nowhere to stay, can't go get work. 
and getting turned down every way you may have somebody else who just lost everything. So it's like a lot of these situations can spiral into something real major. So with what we do in Houston is we just give the people hope. So guess what? We may not have touched everybody in this room, but the fact that I may have touched him and him, that may slow them down from whatever they was thinking. Like, well, if he got to them, maybe it, it, it can happen. It can get to me too. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we keep it going through Houston because it's a lot more. It's a lot more laid back now. Actually, the the, the floods and the disasters brought us together more. You feel that way? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You see the the disasters, war. They bring communities together. You know, unfortunately. Yeah. Trey, take us back, man. Rapping music has been a big part of your life, obviously, but you know everything I've read up on you says that you know helping people has been really your soul's passion throughout your life. I think that's just my heart, just in general, man. I, I think, of course, I, my music is first and foremost, and just what I do. But right, it still don't change the fact of my heart on me. That's the the difference I think of why people mess with me music wise. Like, I have a lot of strong relationships just because I'm genuine. And then in the industry, you get to a lot of people who feel like everybody needs something from me. When people come around me, at, they get the they get that vibe and or, like, he good with or without us. He don't need, like, say, if me and you, if I say, Mike, man, let's go eat right now. <clears throat> An average person going to think, like, yeah, let's go eat. But Mike going to take care of it. I'm the type of person that we moving around. It don't matter whoever with me if I'm – Small or bigger than them, whatever it is, nah, you with me. I got you, you know, because I feel like I'm a man at the end of the day. I can hold my own. So a lot of that stuff kind of give people a breath of fresh air. Well, so. then um, you have to look at it like this. They may think Mike <coughs> wants to pay the bill, and I, I think that they should expect me to pay the bill because I can. Yeah, but then it you got to it, – it's like me. I don't think if me and you went just me, I wouldn't expect you to because at the end of the day, just because you have it don't mean you have to do it. Now, if you choose to do it, no, I can it doesn't respect mean that. I have to do it. You think so? Yeah. You, now you got to you explain to me when you say. So if I say, man, Mike, let's go, let's go to the mall right now. The fact that you have it, you think I should be like, man, Mike, go and get me this. Yeah. I, me myself, I can't speak for everybody else. But me myself, I'll never do that. Yeah. Bro, I, I, prob- yeah. I probably would go without. That would just be me. All right, but, you know, listen to the scenario. Remember you said that, okay? Yeah. We grew up together. We always had shit. We never had shit. We right. never had shit, nigga. But whatever we shared. I, I had a nut. I got a hundred million. You ain't going to ask me for nothing, nigga. Now, the difference of what you just said is we came up together. I'm saying as opposed to say if I'm somebody that didn't come up with you, but I just know you might. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel and you don't we ain't no got money. You don't have no money yet. And then, hey, that's Mike. That you don't have no money. The thing is, if you do that, Mike, if you feel that way, then you gotta you gotta feel like I gotta help every single person in the world. And there's nothing no, wrong with helping every single I can't person. Have in the- to help every single person in the world. But I think that's my duty to help as many people as I can. But especially people that I know that don't have shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you came up with somebody, if we came up. Oh, principle, it would be right because y'all struggle together. But if it's somebody you don't know, you're not necessarily I don't know. Let's required. Check this out. I came off the neighborhood. Say I'm just from around the neighborhood, and everybody else from the neighborhood that's my age is probably dead or older. So I come around the neighborhood, I'm still got it all. So I'm around the neighborhood. Those guys that I grew up with, they're not around, but their kids are around. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up? Let's go to the fucking mall. Boom. But you know what? That's the right. You got to think that's your form of thinking. And that would be right, but realistically, for every other person that got money, they don't think like that, Mike. They not that. To be honest with you, they ain't thinking past their doorstep. They don't give a fuck about what's going on out there, as long as it ain't affecting them. And it's crazy going back to Harvey. A lot of people who you would think, bro, I, I ain't. I'm, we get to that in a second. I'm banned for radio. It's been ten years worldwide, so I'm not able to make money. So I'm nowhere near as big as a lot of people. But guess what? A lot of people never took one time to come out, give a diaper out, buy a case of water for somebody, because at the end of the day, if it's not affecting them directly, they just don't give a damn. Now, your way of thinking is how I think, you know what I'm saying, as far as just wanting to help the people, but majority of people don't think like that. I know, but you know, you got to look at what am I, 52, going to be 53 in June, okay. the end of June. How long do I have? Yeah. What am I going to do with all this? No, really. I, not long, I'll be gone soon. 
you know, you say I live naturally, I don't die, and motherfuckers shoot me and some shit, I don't get a car. I might live for what, 14 more years. Mm-hmm. It's over, nigga. What am I gonna do? But well, see, again, your, your thought process of what you're saying is validated for you. And it would be validated for me for wanting to help people. But again, bro, no matter what, 90% of the world just don't want to do it. My main reason, another reason, too, why I help people the way I do, because my biggest fear is something off what you just said. What if something happened to me? What about my kids? So I'm hoping to inspire the next I nigga. Think, that, I used to think people that, that I used to think they fuck motherfuckers, man. It's about me. They don't give a fuck about me. Look what they did. I used to think that, right? But I realized... um. How the fuck did I get where I got? Motherfucker looked out for me. Yeah. And so you got support from people. You know what I mean? Yeah. White motherfucker looking out for me. You know what I mean? Get me all this shit. Get me that ego. Get me all this shit. And I'm supposed to keep it all to myself. I can't. That shit's as inconceivable. I don't even. Listen, I ain't no fly nigga. I'm just a regular street nigga. But that shit's inconceivable that I got all this money and you don't got shit. I can't fathom that. But you got to think, Mike. That's what I did with my money when I had my gave it all away. G- yeah. Gave it to bitches my home. Oh, can't believe that shit. Niggas around me broke. So uh, what w- what would be your argument if you seen, we just say a dude named Sean. If we seen Sean, Sean just signed a deal with baseball, hmm. 80-something million. But you don't see Sean helping nobody. At the end of the day, you may feel some way, but... You can't really do nothing about him not no, wanting to help he, nobody. because he doesn't know how to. Somebody have to show him how to. He wants to help somebody. Everybody wants to help somebody. No matter how they do it, even that stingy motherfucker, it's somebody they want to help. But they have to know how to help people. Mm-hmm. And maybe from giving helping that one person that they love, they can learn to help more people. You know? I can see that standpoint. I, yeah, I can. Everybody wants to give somebody shit because it feels so good. It's addicting. Once you start doing it, you can't stop it. People that hate you, your family, your, your account, what the fuck are you doing? They'll quit the job. You can't be helped. Get away. They'll leave you. Yeah. Mike, do you feel like at this stage in your life, you feel, you feel like giving someone money is the most helpful thing you can do? No, but it's all that I know to do. I'm not gonna be. In, I'm not gonna spend time with them. I can't do that. I have time for. I need my be with my family. I, I denied them enough. I need to spend time with them and get to know them. I can't spend time with them. All I could do is give them money. That's the most. That's the most wealthiest thing I have. The only thing I really have is my time. Mm. I can't give that to nobody, but it's my family. That's an interesting perspective. I get. I think I give both. Yeah, and, me and too. You know, I, Listening to what he's saying, I, I guess I sure. never, and a lot of people used to always tell, they would tell me and Mr. Rogers, they would be like, y'all not taking no time off for yourselves or for your family. But I think my kids understood. You know, it kind of it kind of made them proud for me to be out as, as much as I was, but I I definitely know a year strong, they didn't really get to see me the way they were supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I had that with my, listen, that's why I, I feel this, because my kids, when I'm a nigga, when I'm 21, 22, what, I had kids at 22, nigga, I didn't know what the f- fuck you, I ain't giving all this up for you, motherfucker, you can die, starve to death, I, ain't, I didn't know this shit, fuck you, I ain't giving this up, I come from nothing, fuck those kids. Mm. And then, um, the time went on, me and my kids started having not good relationships, so I said, fuck this shit, and I stopped everything, and I started spending time with them, and this shit is hard. You know, it's hard. What's your youngest? My youngest is what, eight. My oldest oh. is what, 31. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, how many kids you have? Uh, four, man. Three boys, 18, 16, nine, and then my first little girl, 10 months. And she oh, that's wow. going to be awesome. Wow. And she giving me the hell. Oh, you, listen, listen, um, wow, you think man. now, oh, man, this is nothing, man. You're going to start getting violent soon. Oh, <laughs> start fuck. thinking violent. Oh, Fuck, I start bro. do that and I look at these people and I look at them and they're too old to be looking at my grandma and say, no, what is this? How should I handle this? You know what I mean? I don't know how. So I talk to my wife. It's yeah. just something that I don't know how to handle. You what know? does your wife say? She said she's young and she's a young girl and this is life. She has to live life. Just like you did. You have to learn through life. Fuck. You know, life is the teacher. Life is the true teacher. And know? that's going to be the hard part for me, probably just thinking of how I was used to yeah. chasing after girls. No, listen, you got to like, deal with that too. 
You know what I mean? That's how it is. I just, fuck. Just There's that and listen, biblical no. saying, the sins of the father will be on the child. And I have some, like, upper-class kids. They went to great colleges and stuff. And so I see a couple of my kids, they start dating um, out of their race. They date white people. And this is, and I look at this weird. And I say to myself, I say to myself, do my daughters do this because um, I didn't set a good example at home? How can I marry this fucking nigga? Look how he treats my mother. Listen how he talks to her. Listen how loud he is. Listen how he say, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you all the time. I said, fuck, I fucked up. Well, you know, man, our kids have their own higher power and their own path as well. So, you know, they're going to, they have to deal with those things just as we had to deal with our demons on the way. Yeah. You know? Trey, I think, I mean, do you ever bring your kids with you on the community service stuff you do? Yeah. With my kids, I bring them in, in every aspect, you know. That's I, awesome. From from that aspect to even just the street side because I feel like I want them to have that knowledge of that side too. And before I let another nigga come around and show them wrong, they're going to learn everything from me. So the next person can't amaze them with, hey, let's go get in this car and go do this. Like they didn't experience everything with me. I didn't show them, hey, this, 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 that. So I expose my kids to a lot. Never had, I ain't, I've never with my kids yet. You know, like our relationship is like homies. So I felt the way I did it, it's enough to whether, whatever they thinking or whatever they got going on, they gonna come holler at me. So you know what I'm saying? That that helped me out a lot too. Like I say, my the first person I'm probably gonna have to whoop their ass is my little girl. I'm just, I, I, I feel it, you know what I'm saying? But as far as boys, I just keep it solid with them, man, because I feel like transparency, you know, it. Sometimes a lot of people feel it's bad to be transparent with your kid, but I just feel like no. just keep it solid with them. Because That's what you have to do. Think about it. Every girl I used to, coming up, the girls who would be the, the finest and the ones that we run up, run about the most would be whoever parents was the most strict. Them be the ones we trying to sneak through their windows doing what we do. I feel like I my kids will never have to do that. Like, like nah, just let me know what's going on. With yeah, because I used to always have to, after school, I would always um, not take the bus home. I would walk to the girlfriend's house. I knew her father and mother wasn't home because it wasn't 5 o'clock. Then we got to school at 2.30, 3 o'clock. And I was there. Same after routine. Yeah, same <laughs> stuff. No, man, yeah. You got to be honest with your kids because they're going to find out anyway. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that's the most important thing. Like you were saying, that's that's a blessing. I have a seven year old daughter, and the fact that she can come to me when she has a problem or needs to tell me something, I feel like that's the biggest blessing I could ask for yeah, yeah, as a parent. I mean, you my know? kids, my priority more than anything, man. So that's I could sit there. Rather than trying to be in these motherfucking clubs and do all that shit, I can sit back and just sit and laugh at my kids and fuck with them, and I'll be, I'll be cool, man. Clubs get fucking old too, man. Now, but right now, my kids love them. My kids love clubs right love now. Love the clubs. <laughs> my, club, my son, yeah. know what he does. My oldest son, this is what he does. I can't imagine. It. He he gets money, and I think what is it, a, a table every every yeah. Saturday night. They get a table with him and his boys and some <laughs> girls and people that they sit at their table have to respect them and treat them like a dog because they're at their table. If you don't, you gotta leave. It's crazy. I know, dude. I remember those days. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the that's the image. You know, you got to whoever getting the most bottles sent to their section. You know, you got once you see them sparkling lights, that's all the attention on you. It's cool. all that bullshit, you know. It's you just know. bullshit that people use to think that that's that's what life is all about, man. No, in a weird way, that is what life is about at that stage of their life. When you look at a yeah, royal family, at that stage, you look I at a, you right. look at a royal family, right? You see the royal family. They have their establishment. They have their court gestures. They have their, um, nowadays what we call executives. They have their guards and everything. That's just like them. They have their table. One guy's the king. He may have his broad there, have all his chromies there, have his people blocking his tables like his king, his knights and stuff. And that's the mentality we live. You know, there's always a high order and all mm. kinds of, in every kind of like ants and everything, and little crews, even little um, third graders, there's always a pecking order. Hierarchy. Always, yeah, they pick the they pick the leader. Some people think mm. the leader comes out and shows I'm tough. No, the kids pick the leader. They know who the leader is, just mm. like we know who the leader is, mm -hmm. and we pick our leader. He don't have to show, hey, I want to be the leader. We pick him. Definitely, man. Mike, you you just blew my mind, brother. 
as usual. No, but that's just what it no, is. No, you're man. right. You're totally right. I mean, that's uh, Listen, this is what I found out, too. The leader is not always the baddest motherfucker. You know, that's the weirdest thing. The biggest is tougher than me. That's not the leader. The leader had the brains. Yeah. He can go there, but yeah, he, he also had the brains. Yeah, yeah, but that guy, he controls that guy. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's the leader. The leader fights without even fighting. People fight for him. Mike. What you got, man? Look at this shit, dude. This is what our new sponsor, Manscaped, fucking sent us, buddy. What the hell is Manscaped? In the old days. I've never shaved my balls. Listen to this, dude. This is a brand new exclusive ball trimmer. Okay? Really? Tell me how that works. This is the Lawn Mower 2.0. It's got an adjustable guide comb. I'm feeling that already. It's a snap-in yeah, blade. I, I mean, I'm sure you could use this on yeah, your beard or your, my your, balls. Yeah, yeah, your balls. It's got a non-slip molded assembly for easy handling. So when you're shaving your junk, you're not fucking, it's not flying all over the place. I'm ready. It's unbelievable. I'm Look ready. at this. You get your very own Manscaped man toolkit. Yeah. That's like a man purse. Look at this, buddy. That's what one looks like. Huh? Ooh, it's quiet stroke. Now you don't have to use the same trimmer on your face as you do on your balls. It's the tool for your family jewels. I respect that. It comes with a crop mop, which is a ball wipe, so you got active pH control. Manscaped. It's fucking manscaped. And right now, get 20% off and free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. I just have to say that I don't I don't, I know don't think how. nobody should be, um, nobody should die in a death row. Absolutely. Get the, a, the law, away with the, the death law, penalty. The laws are not perfected enough to do that to someone. No. You know, I was looking on the internet, and you know they say it's still some states that the death penalty is a firing range. Firing squad, like yeah. In I, I never I knew that. Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, which one? Oh, on Utah, they do it in Utah. They kill Gary Gilmore like that. Are you so it, with that's Gilmore? it for real. They just line Gary you Gilmore's up. Gary Gilmore's a serial killer that they put him in. He killed a lot of people. And he, he paid to get killed with this firing line. Yeah, so they see they sit you up and fuck. They fire you up. Did y'all see the story about the lady who got shot recently? Uh, which one? Five times. Yeah, five times <laughs> yeah. by the cop. No. Uh, so it was in Baytown, and I, I went to stand for So what happened is she had a mental illness. But you know how, of course, you know, coming up in the hood, you know you can always have somebody in the neighborhood that's just, they may be crazy, but everybody knew them. Yes. It's normal. It's, uh, you know, like, yes. oh, that's just them. And then, so she had a mental illness. Her and the officer stay in the, they stay in the same apartments. So he even took her to jail a few times. He know her real well. This particular day, she's just walking around picking up trash. And he quote unquote said she had a warrant. So with that, he went to harass her. And she trying to get home to where he's slanging her around. I believe he tried to tase her. So he just, he, he slanging her, just handling her real rough. So in the midst of the last altercation, uh, as far as what he was doing, she fell. And he said she reached for a taser, uh, the taser that was, I mean, the taser that was already deployed, if I am mistaken. Shot her five Ugh. times, first shot right between the eyes. Jesus. And my thing is like, you know her. Everybody know she don't mean harm. And even if it was a one, you're off duty. And then if somebody's mentally ill, you have to call for backup. I'm Looking at that video, I'm gonna show you when we get out here, looking at that video, it looked like he was waiting for that moment. No, let me explain this to you. From my, my experience, right? There's just some people, I used to feel this way too. This is why I know. There's just some people that believe some people are not worth living. They'll waste the fucking space on this planet. He doesn't deserve to be here. He's a, worth of, he's, a, he's a waste of a fucking human being, or she's a waste of a human being. There's people that feel like that. There's tons of people that feel like that out here. You wouldn't believe it. If fucking, he's not, he doesn't deserve to be out this despise seeing this motherfucker. Makes me sick. Yeah. That's a fucked up way to be. Yeah, oh, please. Uh, that's just how the world, you know what I mean, creates people. You know, say somebody shot my mother. Say yeah, my mother's away for life because of a a drug thing or she killed my father. You know, people think that fuck the world. Yeah. How do we get those people to be like 
you guys who are like, let's help the world. Hey, um, how do we make that change? It's not gonna happen overnight. Definitely not. You know I, mean? I think the start you have to be, they have overnight. to be able to relate to you because if they ain't nobody gonna become. I think the reason why the community even fuck with me the way they do is because they trust me. They have to. You have to be able to relate because it. If I'm going through something and you've never been through what I've been through, why would I listen to you? Mm. So I think the start is definitely going to have to be somebody that they respect or somebody who's been through what they've been through. And they feel a lot of times people ain't been through what they've been through. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot of people Everybody, do. when they're down, they think only they did, they're dealt with this and no one did this before. Mm-hmm. You know, they think they're the only one that ever felt pain. They don't, this is only happening to them and God doesn't like them. Yeah. You know, this is just a test. We all go through tests in life. And sometimes this test gets so hard, we kill ourselves. It's just too much. I can't take it. I know. Happened to a lot of friends of mine. You just can't take it, too. Had money, had everything we're doing. It's, can't, it's just too hard. I can't take it. Isn't Somebody it? know I'm gay. I'm sorry. Please, I'm going to kill myself. Boom. And, and, and it's certain, it's only a selective few that, that weather the storm. So I was telling you earlier, I'm banned for radio. So what happens is, with me being banned for radio, <clears throat> I'm banned worldwide from radio. Banned from radio worldwide? Yeah. So what happens is, say, if you come into town, if you align yourself with me, or what they the see you. What the fuck did you say? What happened, <laughs> dude? How the what fuck the did f- that happen? <laughs> <laughs> what the come fuck on, Trey, did you say, man? That piece of it. Yeah. Not, so, the come fuck? on. Yeah. So what happened is, the second Trey Day, um, young dudes out there getting ready to fight. One of them end up pulling the gun out, and some gunshots go off. This after the event over, but you know they they go to. It's always your type people like just bashing the lower class. And my whole thing was, we wasn't there. But so so when it happened, I get the call. I'm thinking, damn man, the news finna have a field day with this. But the news end up supporting like everything Trey did was right. You know we can't control what going. But then it's the 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 one that you would think support the 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 black radio like they the ones who went to bash me so they bashing me all across the radio I finally get to call and speak my piece so as I'm doing it we arguing you know and they it's your type people it's, they always cause these problems loud music <coughs> this and that and it's like one who the fuck is those type people you know what I'm saying like yeah I I don't even understand what that is so we arguing and they thinking it's cute. One of the morning show hosts, this, no lie, the only thing I did ever in the whole situation was call her a fat ass. And I, that was just in the midst, that was in the midst of her doing what she was doing in the midst of me feeling how I was feeling and I spoke on it. So what happens is you're looking at a young black man that you got your own holiday. It's really damn they can do no wrong in the city from, it don't matter if it's the mayor or anybody come in town, this is who they gravitating to. So it's like, He's a tad bit too powerful. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, I remember being told they was going to make an example out of me, and um, they were trying to make sure they removed my leg. So it's nothing, not, not physically, but nothing else I can do. Mm-hmm. So what they would start doing was any artist coming to town, hey, if you align yourself with them, we're not going to play your music. Any company that, that's in town, hey, if you want to advertise with us, you can. But if you deal with him, one, you can't advertise with us. Yes, because you said this bitch has a fat ass. Yeah, no, well, Get not because. the fuck, I know. Hey, Come on. No, no. And I wasn't saying she had a oh, fat ass. Oh, no, she was fat. fat. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, not good. So, so they started doing that. So I remember, man, there was so many situations. It would, it would be like. I used to, when Dub Car Show used to come to Houston, it was real big. I don't know if it's still real big out here. I would be one of the main headliners most of the time because they would always have to have somebody from the town. On them, I remember being called by them one day, like, "Hey, man, you know we apologize. We're not gonna be able to pay you, and we not we can't allow you to touch the stage because if we do that, they won't promote our event. So it, it just got to a point where companies not dealing with me, the the, the artists not able to deal with me because you you ain't gonna get played. To um, I remember Haiti happened. Bun B was doing some stuff with Haiti where they ended up needing food and water, so. When it come time to get the people, people reach out to me because they know we'll get the people out there. So he reached out to me. We get ready to raise the food and the water and stuff to send over there. They tell him, hey, you know, I know we want to help these people, but we're not going to help you push this if he on there. You got to take him off. 
You know what I'm saying? So they put people in an uncomfortable situation where it's like, do That's I stand fuck. and fuck with Trey or stand for what's right or do I fuck off my money? So at first I used to be I used to be mad at the world, but then I got to a point where it's like, I get it. You got to take care of your family. Cool. I'm a, I'm I'm gonna figure it out. The first couple of years, bro, I went from being on top to losing everything. When I say everything, losing friends, family, I been, everything. Oh, nigga, I put, oh, nigga, I lost everybody. Yeah. Oh, nigga, but I got to be. I got to keep it. I had a lot of friends come visit me. But as far as doing business, oh, I lost everybody. Mm-hmm. And who I wanted to be with, who I wanted to be my friends and stuff, people I really wanted to be friends with that I could make a life with maybe, oh, fuck, mm-hmm. over. Had to start a whole new life, meet whole new new people besides the people that I had, you know, but it was just. And you know, I, I think that just built, that built stronger character for us because if you look back in the old days or the Bible days, you would see people losing and, and starting over. Oh. You have to. What else are you going to do, you know? It's in some people's DNA just to win, you know, even not even for the right reason, just because I want to show them. And that's not the right reason, but it's just that I want to be somebody. I don't want to be nobody. I've been nobody all my life. I want to have opportunity to be somebody. So it's been, it's been, <laughs> it's going on 11 years now, so, and I'm still, How you know, still 10 have years. Trey Day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you listen, man. You a great relationship with your hometown. That, you could do so much on Trey Day. Trey Day is just, the t- this is the moment to um, use as a, a marketing. Trey Day is marketing to you. You know what I mean? So, you could tell people who you are and what you are and what you want to be whenever you want to because it, it's your day. Yeah. To say who you are. And that, you, know, I, you can't let that. I know I used to be that, but it used to beat me down because I wanted to make money. I wanted to do commercials, but I had I had a taste of it before. I did Pepsi Cola commercials. I did I did Kodak commercials. So I had got that shit. I got a taste <laughs> of what Jordan and them was getting. Yeah. And when I got fucked up, I wanted to back, mm-hmm. you know. But I get I just did such a I got caught up in such a bad, nasty, dark world. I never was able to get that back. You know what I mean? I was really labeled bad nigga, scary bad nigga. Don't fuck with him. Mm-hmm. He might not show up, and then when he do show up, he might smash you. For, tell him for being late. It's just I was just dark, you know. I know the feeling, <laughs> nigga. I know the bro. I but, know but, the. Um, I know I, I know I fucked up because I know I wanted that, mm-hmm. and I fucked it up. Well, you know, and we can't live on it now. No, never. Back, do, but yeah. I learned from it. You know yeah, what I mean? definitely. I was gonna say because now you where you are Absolutely. now. Absolutely, I just yeah. realized that um. I have no control over the situation. I only have control over me. I make sure my side of the street is clean. I don't have no control of my wife. She has to take care of her side of the street. I just have to make sure mine is clean because mine is not clean. Everything's fucked up. You know, if hers is dirty and my kids are dirty, we're still going to stri- uh, strive and we're going to still do well. But if I'm fucked up, everything's going to die. Yeah. Same with the street rules. You, yeah. re- you remove the head. Everything's gonna fall. Everything. Mm. Yeah. So Trey, what do you got lined up for this Trey Day? I should get them hope like no other man. And I remember coming up before I even made the rap. And thank to God I'm good now. Cause back then I sucked when I first started. Cause I got a, I started rapping. I got a brother. He's doing two life sentences right now. And um, you know. Coming up in the hood, you either look up to your father, your older brother, or big homies. And my older brother was my world, his name Dinky. That's how I started rapping. But I remember coming up, I would be wanting to go to shows. I'd be wanting to 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 meet famous people or, or even get help by people. And I didn't have the opportunity. I always said, man, if I ever got on, I'm going to do totally opposite of that and be accessible to the people. And I've been doing that ever since, you know. That's really important. People, um, especially um, the, our youth, they got to be able to touch you to know that you're real, you that, know. That, that shit makes a major difference. Hey, listen, I met Muhammad Ali when I was like, what, 12 years old, 11 years old in um, a reform school. He came to visit the kids, and that fucked me up. And fu- I said, I want to be like, I don't know what the fuck happened to me that day. Life changed. Was you already fighting then, or you wasn't? No, I never had. A, I never had. A, I never knew what so, boxing was. See, so shit like that. I didn't is what know inspired. what boxing was. I didn't know what boxing was. I used to. This is a great guy. They said Muhammad Ali. Everybody was fucking crazy. So who the fuck is he? I had no idea. That's a crazy story. Never knew that. Yeah. But you could just see his energy. You could feel his energy. You were just like, that's what oh, I was like. Be a when God, I grew up. Yeah. How, how was he? He was cool, laid back, humble. Oh, awesome, funny, happy, talking to you. It's loving, it's warm, hmm. powerful. 
Yeah. Crazy shit. Trey Day providing a lot of great resources to the community. No more music? Yeah, yeah, definitely music. Man, it, it's so fucked up. <laughs> Life be taking this toll on me, so every once in a while I finally get a break where I can jump back into the music, but I be dealing with from trying to help people, save people, from dealing with life, the kids, just taking care of the city, but definitely the music. The crazy thing, I got over 2,000 unreleased records. Like, I I, I can't go, like, if me and you sitting one-on-one, I can't be like, man, Mike, I'm just going through it right now. It's hard. What I do is I get in there and I vent on a microphone. That's why I got so many songs. But um, right now I'm finna finally get ready to put out an album. The first record I'm going to put out comes out on the 14th. It's called Nipsey. You know, me and Nipsey was real, real close. And what I'm going to do is when I put out the song in the video, everything from the downloads to purchasing it to streaming will go to the trust fund for the kids that they set up. So that's going to be the kickoff. And then once I do that, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'll get back to it. And then again, look, right when I do that, trade day coming up, so I get occupied doing so much other stuff, man. So it's definitely coming. My new album called Exhale, like, I feel like, man, this is a time I was going through so much stuff. I got to just let it all out. So tell me, I'm, you know, I'm just asking you some questions. Why do you want to save the world? Why, why do you feel you can? I don't, I don't, I'm going to say this. I don't think I can save the world, but I, I definitely feel I'm going to save as, as many as I can to definitely make an impact. And I just feel it's needed. You know what I'm saying, man? The worst feeling, and you should know that, the worst feeling on earth is, feeling you ain't got nobody, it's just you against the world and you on your own. That 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 can lead to any type of destruction, That's anything. That's interesting, because now my feeling now, I didn't help anybody. That's why I think now, I didn't help nobody. I didn't help enough people. I kept too much money. I spent too much on myself. You know so crazy? Yeah. I feel bad spending money on myself like that, bro. When I was young, I didn't understand what taking my. When you um, when you're young, I didn't understand what taking care of yourself. Well, I thought taking care of yourself was fucking a hundred girls, getting drunk, getting hot, buying myself a nice suit, driving myself a nice car, buying myself a nice house or a plane. Mm -hmm. I thought that was taking care of myself, being good to myself. That was killing myself. You know what I mean? I was dying to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You only live. It feels good. It's a drug. Listen, once you start giving people shit, it, it's fucked, nigga. It's raw. It's a rap. <laughs> oh, you get that response, whatever it is. If, you, if she hugs you and you think she wants to give you some bullshit, if somebody cries and says, oh, thank you. Oh, nigga, it's over. You're done. <laughs> you're fucking done. And you, you, and you're right. That the, the crazy thing, with even with all the people I help, it's still never enough. Mm -mm. It's never enough. But I just continue to do what I can. Like, you know, like, it was, what I just did, I believe, a week ago. So I just found out in school, in high school, they have student fees. So if you don't pay for your cap and gown and all that, you, I believe it's either you're allowed to walk the stage and you don't get your diploma or you get your diploma you can't walk the stage. Hmm. So what I did. Everybody wants to walk the stage, though. Yeah. So Even what I ended up doing is I went to some schools and I just covered their bill. I went and got yeah. them all that. But what the part I'm getting to is, soon as I did that, you best believe every school in the city of Houston was. Yeah. I I can't I ain't got it to to do every single person in the city, but somebody just did that. Uh, it was a Howard, some school, some. Oh yeah, yeah. He. Somebody I ain't got. For every, somebody graduated. I ain't got that type of money. Graduate. <laughs> I ain't got that type of money. Like, what was it? A, was it millions or was it? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, it was, the, just graduate all these niggas. People gonna yeah. grab. They gonna get their fucking um. No, the college debt. College he, yeah, he, he removed their, their college debt. That yes. was a yeah, debt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. That was a lot. Trey, how do you deal with that? Because you can only give so much. How do you deal with the people that want I, I mean, to help? I mean, I do my best. I try and talk to them and let them know, like, I'm, I, I'm at a point where I'm tapped out. And mm. then I try and find other things to do. Mm. Like, for instance, um, I remember Christmas we took families on a – this last year, we took families on a twenty thousand dollars shopping spree. Families that that's going through it because a lot of them have to they have to show, you know, give give their stories of how many kids they got. Or, or some of them don't have cars. Some of them damn they got a place to stay. So we pick the ones that need the most, and we would take them and do different stuff like that. 
and sometimes it turned out even good. I remember J.C. Penny partnered with me. Well, I ain't gonna necessarily say partner, but we gave them seventy five thousand, and we took two hundred families, and they gave me not only with me giving them that money, and we picked the two hundred families. They let us get stuff at almost like fifty or sixty percent off. So you imagine families walking out of there with trash bags and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, but no what should be done, you should work with all the corporations for whatever the corporation together, the society it's all of them and all of them should be help helping out to distribute to the people with less fortunate than themselves. I've never had like I don't get help with trade day. I don't well, even no, know how to get listen, a sponsor. No, I'm saying I'm trade day. Trade day is the day. That's the day all this stuff happened. They gotta be sponsoring trade day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I gotta figure out you gotta how sponsor to sponsor trade day. I gotta figure no, out how to how get you, to them. No, this is how you do it. You get your lawyer. You call them and they explain it, and you go with them, of course, so they can see you. And of course, you bring some of your articles. Show me. Show them some of your. Um, put your tape and show them some of your. <laughs> television reviews about trade and how people are so happy and how the mayor gave you trade and boom the mayor was there oh really so i can meet the mayor with you all right let's fight let's um finance this guy once political power is involved every, all these guys want to meet the mayor because the mayor's gonna tell everybody that this is a great philanthropist too these guys <laughs> that own um jc penny and woolworth and all these guys in the national bank you have to get them all that's all that's when um the government and big business works together but the thing is, how do you get in the door? Because I, I ain't even... You're tra- I you got trade day. You still haven't got meetings yet. To <laughs> no, no, no. You go. This is how it is. You and your lawyer go and you, you make these people aware of trade day and how the people come and they sponsor you. And when they see all these people sponsoring your trade day, how many people come out to trade day, you were saying? Yeah, eight to 10,000. Eight to 10,000. That's eight to 10,000 customers they see. I need to put a picture up here, J.C. Penny, so they can see that while they're fucking um, worshiping this nigga. All right, they're gonna see that too. <laughs> this is associating with him. They love him. They love this. That's how that goes. Trey, who do you think? They don't care about. Do you think people care? They care about what you can do. That's what you can do. You can draw. That's their customers. I want your customers. I want your fans. I want your fans to donate to this, distribute to my company. Yeah. I want their twenty dollars. 15 bucks, whatever it is, 12.99. I want I want 10,000 12.99s. How much you think that is? Can you add that? How much you think that is? <laughs> you know. You want so, me to add it? Yeah, 10,000 12.99s. <laughs> Trey, who would be your ideal sponsorship? Well, this year, man, I, I can honestly say what I'm doing what at last year. Huh? Any Kodak, anything from weed people can be your well, you don't smoke weed. Nah, nah, yeah. well, anybody smoke weed, drink liquor. No, I don't drink well, any, well, I'm Maybe sorry. a water company, probably. Water company, yeah. That kind of yeah, I think any, I think any just big, big business. What I, what I did now Sometimes. is you heard of Stock X? No. Tell so me about Stock that. X is they, they read they, they're famous for shoes. People, any shoe heads go to them. So what they did was again, because like Mike was saying, well, I feel if people got money, they should spend it. I still don't want to ask nobody. So what I do is... Oh, you got I, pride, huh? Nah, I, you know what? Wait, wait, <laughs> before you go there. Wait, oh, wait, yes wait. No, no, nah, nah, wait. Fuck. Yes, you I know. No, nah, I'm going to keep it real with you, nigga. I do. Yes, you I do. do to an extent. Oh, but man. wait, no, You're never going to accomplish your goal. No, but no, nah, wait. You got to... Wasting look, time, buddy. Look, look. You got to let me... Oh, I so, you oh, Now. Nah. Wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened is, now I reach out to some of my homies and I'll be like, like, for instance, um... Khaled or PJ Tuck and them, what they'll do is they'll give me a pair of shoes that they may have wore in the game or something that people can't really get. And Stock X uh, uh, put it up and we made, like last year we did 15 pairs of shoes and we made it to where it don't matter if you eight years old or you 48, all you have to do is put $5 in a pot and you get your, your ticket. You can get as many tickets as you want and they get raffled off at the end. The That's how they raise. They help you raise money. Ticket, the guy, the athlete. They do it. They do it online. Online. Yeah. So the athletes, they'll do they and the, and the rappers, they'll do their videos and stuff. It'll be a whole campaign, and it's a site that they'll go to. They raffle online, and whatever money they get, they kick back to trading. So like. Last year, trade I ended up spending like hundred and thirty thousand. No, see, that's not business. That's bad business. You're not money. You're not supposed to come with your pocket. That's an offense. This is trade. Everybody's supposed to donate and tribute to you. Brother Whole Foods, you know, it's, yeah, a, it's a learning process. I'm still again, and off off record, I'm pretty sure I get some game from you. I gotta just, yeah. And pride, oh. don't get. I'm gonna keep it solid. I'm like I said, I'm <laughs> transparent. I do have pride, but not pride to where I feel I'm better than people. Pride to no. where I just 
you know in life when you get disappointment so much, you just get to a point where like I'm gonna yeah. prevent myself from being disappointed. Oh, no, listen, this is what it is. You don't want to believe because I don't want. You don't believe that they're your friend. Deep down in your gut of core, you don't believe that they're your friend. That's why. You don't ask them. You like them. You like to hang out with them. You love to hug them. You love to whatever you do with them. But deep down inside, you know, um, it's a possibility they're going to give you some bullshit. They're not going to say anything. Because you know, deep down inside, you know, they're not your friend. They do it because they see you going through this. They should automatically just jump on your back. We're doing this together. Why do you have to ask them? You got a point. My friend, my friend, see me suffering and see me working hard. They jump right with me. They're not even saying that's what we doing. That's how my friends do it. Sometimes I don't even want them with me. Then you know what I mean? Cause I say, what they gonna want out of this shit? You know what I mean? But that's just what friends do. Even though they got bad habits, maybe they're not perfect. But that's what a friend does. Let's do it. Well, you gotta remember them. Yeah. Friends are scarce. It ain't that many of them, man. So the, like that, no, that the process, no, man. That the process of that. That's because you have to be a friend. Once you are a friend, they will be your friend. Trust me. I know you say all oh, niggas ain't shit. Cause I used to think that too. But people are wanting somebody to be a friend. We all want somebody to be a friend, but we don't trust no niggas because these niggas ain't right out here. You know? Right. But we all look for friends because most of our friends are dying. And now, look how many, did we become lonely? Next thing you know, we're hanging out with people we would never hang out with because we're lonely. Mm. People who might not be good for us because everybody's dying, everybody's sick, and they're not there no more. So these guys are still around the neighborhood. But we never fucked with each other before. So now I'm fucking with them, even though I don't feel good enough because no one else is around. And I'm around my neighborhood, and they're around my neighborhood. So who else is in the fucking neighborhood? You got a point. Yeah. You have to, that's you have to learn to be friends. I remember I could be saying, man, we're going to kill this motherfucker. I remember all them fucking dark days. We have to learn to love each other and be friends. We are designed not to like each other from hundreds and hundreds of years. And even when we were in Africa, we were designed to hate that tribe and put them in slavery to these European motherfuckers. Because that's how we've been designed, to compete against everybody. Competition. You know. I see me and Mike gonna have a lot to talk about, man. <laughs> no, but that's just that's just what it is. That's just how we would do even with white people, they all we all learn to compete against each other, to betray to be smarter than him for we gotta think him and outsmart him. We weren't taught that. That's you know, we're coming to another age where we even eat different now. In another twenty years we'll eat different. We won't eat meat. People won't fuck with animals with sadistic people just like killing them. We won't even eat them no more. We eat different kind of shit. We eat vegetables and fruits. I know you can't see that now, but your grandkids will. Hmm. Oh, I, Mike, I used to be 290. I lost all my way. I'm starting to eat better now. Yeah, Amazing, right, man. <laughs> and it goes that's away. Awesome. And it goes away. Once you start working, doing positive stuff, stop eating that shit, it goes away. I was 320. Yeah, it goes away. Yeah, yeah man. Like I, don't think we're, I don't think we're meant to eat animals. Hmm. I don't think people are meant to eat animals. Even though they make us strong, you know, during the process, they kill us. Mm. Once we gorge ourselves, I was just saying, I was reading in the, the Roman Empire, people loved eating so much, they ate, they ate till they couldn't eat no one, then they, they the go off, they threw up, they threw up, and then they ate again, yeah, they couldn't yeah. help it. The vomitoriums. Yeah. And crazy. they used to take all the gladiators' blood for their aches and their gouts and stuff and rub it on their gouts and even drink it. Well, Mike, what do you think about the like decadence of ancient Rome and how that was really the what led to their fall. Their just consumption and how they loved richness and they luxury. They got it from the Greeks. The mm. um, Romans didn't know anything, really, you know? Mm. Most of their knowledge and stuff they received basically from the Greeks and how to build. They took the Greeks gods and had gave them different names. They were kind of barbaric. The, the Greeks pretty much educated them. And they just took it to a, from, from, from a Greek education and put it in a Roman perspective. Was the city of Rome, Italy, was that the center of Rome? I've been to Rome, and I don't know what part it is but Rome. I don't know what part it is. It's close to Milan. It's close to um, Wales. It's close to Sardinia. But this is like the southern part of it mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, a few hours away. But... Um, it's just a big, old, nasty city. Yeah. Was that the hub of ancient Rome, though? That was the hub of the world. That was the hub of the world at one yeah. point. Now do you think it's New York City? <sighs> New York City, yeah, but city, Vegas is building up a new city. Mm. You know what I mean? They're building up. Um, L.A. is building more. You know what I mean? Cities are building. We're going to run into new cities. You never know. We might find new property somewhere.
They still running. I, I was watching the YouTube because I'm a YouTube nut. They got people that haven't seen that's been in an island for 6,000 years or 60,000 years. Yeah. And I've right. have never seen a white man till this year. In India? Outside in the Jawa people, but there's yeah. other the other tribes too. I don't know their name, but the Jawas and some other people. They killed that one guy that came and said, Oh Jesus yeah. loves you yeah. and I hit him with that spill. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh God, praise I'm that. sorry, yeah, I'm not laughing. Like, like, fuck yeah. that. He said, Jesus loves you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then they hit him hook, then they hit him with a sword. And then they wrapped a, a uh, rope around his neck and drug him in the forest. Oh, Never heard fuck. from him again. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> and this is cool. This is wild too, because as I'm watching um, the thing I said, if I ever been there, I would always look up, and I found that these guys climb trees like monkeys. They yeah. climb like thirty foot trees that way on the top. The people look so small. So you're walking, looking for them, they're watching you. It's a trip. These yeah. people, they're they're wild. They, yeah. They've never seen people. They were, first thing when they saw Steve, you know, Steve went on there. Steve-O? Yeah, and they saw Steve, they looking at his white ass, they grabbed him, they started biting on him and chewing on him and humping on his crack and smacking him and beating on him and shit. Well, we gonna watch, we gonna see that shit when we go out, right? And Steve said, hey man, I'm tired of you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh man, it was crazy. It's crazy. Steve is out of his fucking mind. I would go mad if this guy bit me. Can you imagine this guy never been to the doctor in his life and he oh bit my him? God. Oh, no. Holy oh, shit. Fuck, bro. Imagine for over 60,000 years you've never been to a fucking doctor. My whole generation never been to a doctor and they bite you, they're biting on you. Their immune system probably strong as shit. Oh, no, yeah. it's weak. It is? We kill them. When we, cause we're some we nasty motherfucker. We touch them, we be around them, they die. Mm, we're, some sta- we're some nasty motherfuckers. <laughs> and that's what they did to us. The um, Europeans came over yeah. with the Indians and the yeah. Africans. They killed, them with more, they killed them more with diseases Disease. than they did with the knife and the gun. Yeah. Um, how about that dude we saw yesterday, or whatever day that was, the Agori cannibal? <laughs> yeah, that was India? the same. No, listen. Um, that might have been the same guy that was with Steve O. And oh, he was throwing yes. piss at the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's with Steve. He's the, he was throwing the piss. He drank guy. the piss, and then he took this piss, and he hit the motherfucker in the face with it. And I think he took some shit and hit him yeah. with some shit. And yeah. I think he humped the nigga's ass and did all this shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I said, we should just, I, my, my mentality, I'm a sick guy, I'm dog. My first idea is to kill them all and fucking see if there's gold back there. And I'm saying, yeah, it's dark as they are, Mike. Really? You know, it's just crazy, because that's why. That's where at, your mind no. goes, Oh, Mike? yeah, because this is what one particular time it was a guy that saw the tribes there yeah they believed they were gold there so they went there and they just yeah. brutalized them yeah. and that's the first thing I said I wonder do they have gold that was all, your first yeah, thought yeah cause all ancient people have gold for some reason that's it not attracts my first them. thought no that's my first thought they, do they have any wealth cause they all have gold for some, why do they why, is, why do they, they attract sacred. the gold they all they have, have gold not all of the indigenous people have a place a mine ancient mine where gold uh, I don't know where it is but they all have gold trinkets where do they get this shit from? They got chains and necklaces, gold. They know where to find it. And that's what the guy, he figured it was gold back there, so he wiped out around 20 of them. He, he took them. No, he didn't, really, he didn't really know. Yeah, I think it was India. Well, and then I, there was... An island outside of India. Of course, there's um, El Dorado, the city of gold in, the se- in South well, America. Well, that's, that's, uh, that might be fictitious. That's, a, that's his history. That's not the truth. It was never found. Crazy. Trey, you got to come to the ranch, man. Oh, Trey, I know you don't smoke, but this is some beautiful. You can perform there. You want to yeah, perform? Yeah, Trey, you got to perform. perform. No, 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 what, had, what's the ranch? Listen, we had, um, who, gonna, do we, who do we have perform? We had Miguel ASAP perform. Ferg. ASAP Ferg. Um, few, a lot of great, great yeah. artists, man. And listen, we're getting ready to get. Um, we're going to have Kind Festival, yeah, too. Yeah, Drake. We're getting ready to get Drake and Migos. And Billie Eilish. Ready, Billie Eilish. We're getting ready to talk to um, Count Captain K. Count me in. You know, it don't matter K. who Coach else. Coach K. Coach yeah, K. it don't matter who else <laughs> coming. Just count me in. Yeah, like, no got to, bro. I mean, you can't nah, show them this stuff, man. You can't, if we fuck dude, them, you can't show hey, them. Hey, but look, you know what I'm tripping on? I'm looking up. at y'all. You, you know I got a, I'm part of a headphone and a, a radio company. I'm going to send y'all some. Yeah. I'll get it sent out this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is cheap dude. shit. Nah, this shit going to be top of the line for you, man. Oh, yeah. It make me think, though, Mike, what you were saying about what – Friends or, or family supposed to naturally do it. They watching you. You go through it or watching you something that you I want. Got this shit. If I can genuinely help, I'ma help. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, listen. If I, if I'm out here. We all chilling. All of us together. We all chilling out. We smoking this shit. You don't smoke. We smoking this shit. <laughs> but you're fucked up. Your clothes are not looking good. 
Yeah. It's possible we don't know, but we, we know you don't look good. Why are you going to have to tell us? You don't even have to tell us. This nigga, let's get out of here, nigga. Let's yeah. go and get right. You know what I mean? You know nobody got to tell you if you fucked him. You don't have to, your friend don't have to ask you to kind of get some money. If you look at me, he needs some fucking money. Mm-hmm. It's common fucking sense, but you, sometimes you got to tell people because no one ever taught them that. If you don't ask them, they don't know. These niggas say this shit. A closed mouth don't get fed. No bullshit. Fucking, if you blind motherfucker, you don't get fed. That's what happened. You need to see if the motherfucker's fucked up or not. Or if he's not. Or if he can be helped. Oh, what we got here, nigga? Hanging Neuroxis. with Tyson. Yeah. This is what we doing, man. I want them to see ASAP Rap um, Ferg and them guys. Yeah, yeah, right here it goes right here. Look at my crowd. I had it for 4,7500 came. Yeah, for good. It was dope, man. Oh. Yeah. I had a miracle round and shit. Yeah. <laughs> look, see, it's going. To, oh, look at Miguel doing his shit. But know what I found out? Um, the crowd is not, not into that R&B no more. They want that hardcore shit. Yeah. The younger crowd, yeah. yeah they, they got they, two they, different Miguel, They didn't give Miguel the love that I thought he should deserve, but they, they went crazy for this motherfucker right here. A$AP? They lost it. Yeah, they lost yeah. it. Yeah. Where is this at? Vegas or here? No, it's this here. is in Desert Hot Springs. This is like an hour hour away from here. Before you get to Coachella? Yeah. Coachella, it's called? Yeah. Yeah, it's right in there. Oh, I'm coming. When it is was it? dope, man. Oh. Dope. It's in October. Yep, come in. You took oh. who kid up there? No, I think who kid didn't come there. Who kid didn't come? Shout out, there? matter of fact, shout out who, who kid. Who kid? You know who kid who set this up? So yeah, he shout did? out who kid. Yeah. yeah, we gotta get who kid ass down here. Yeah. Who <laughs> kid? But it, it it turned out to be a blessing, man, because I, I reached out to who kid as I was telling you, my bro, um, James the Beast Wilson. Hey, you were, you one of his idols. So I was like, man, who kid? I remember because I was at a party with Shaq. Shaq had me at a party in mm-hmm. Vegas where I actually met you for the first time. I was like, man, who? We got to find Mike. I don't give a damn how we find him. Wherever you tell me, I, I, as a brother, I want to make sure I make that happen so I can introduce them. And, um, who kid was like, well, you know, Mike got a uh, podcast. And he was talking to Fred. And I was like, for real? And I ain't know Fred knew who I was. So when I was talking to him, he was like, well, yeah. He was like, well, yeah, I know you do this, this, and this. And I was like, he was like, man, would you like to be on the podcast? I was like, shit, man, I was that's a blessing. That's more of an honor. Hell, fuck yeah, I want to be part you. of it, man. Yeah, so. man. Thank you. You know, I'm here Thank looking you, at your brother. mouth, right? And I'm thinking, <laughs> right? And I said, um, it's never been a time in life when people didn't have gold. I'm talking about even cavemen. It's never been a time in life when people didn't have gold teeth. <sighs> yeah, even if they were just solid gold. It's yeah. weird. No, it's weird. They just knew how to put in the teeth. You know, you think that maybe it was... Um, That's interesting. I don't know. Probably like, what, fucking... If they've been doing it for Africa forever, mm. you know? In your mouth. That's why they say the price of gold never go down. That's no. the, they say diamonds ain't worth shit. And gold is uh, is is worth. Well, no. I ain't gonna say diamonds ain't no, worth listen. shit. But right, diamonds right, right. God. But listen, this is what what it all comes down to, right? This it comes down to our. Uh, this is human. This is our, our shallowness. Um, no why gold is. It doesn't cost as much as white gold. And no why um we like gold more than the others because it's prettier. It's more noticeable than white gold and silver and everything. So it's not that it's worth more. No, it, it, no, it's, it's more noticeable. It's prettier than silver and white gold and all that, and platinum and all that stuff. You know what I mean? All that stuff, the platinum, all that stuff is more expensive to gold, but it's, gold has always been the warning force. Yeah. You know, countries been conquered over gold and bought over gold, bought with gold. Yeah. They listen. We can't get enough gold. It's too much. It's too much gold from human consumption in this planet. If every people, if every person over here took, um, I don't know, you say if every, every person on the planet took a ton of gold, it'd still be enough in the planet. The planet's made out of in minerals. All the planets, Jupiter, Mars, all that stuff is made out of minerals. Asteroid, asteroids, asteroids, when they crash, boom, and and scientists looks at it with his microscope, they see diamonds, gold, see particles, all that, emeralds, everything coming out of the crash. That's why they keep hunting. That's why they want. That's why they want to go to other plants so they could dig and get all the minerals out of them. They're full of minerals. Too many. That's for why they up there now. Yeah. That's why. What do they use them for? The diamonds, the platinum, it's all that stuff. But only for decoration. No, for gold. They sell it. They hold it. Hmm. They sell it on the market. You know what I mean? Hmm. For greed, the richest people in the world have the power to send somebody to another planet to dig. But what do they think that contains? What, the, the planet? No, the minerals. The minerals are diamonds, gold, platinum, that I kind know, of stuff. I know, but why? 
I don't know. I don't know why. Was, they made it worth so much. The people did. Yeah, I, I believe you can get some electric out currents from that stuff too. Le- electricity has a lot to do with that, and currency and power has a lot to do with that. With that too. Hmm. Maybe they feel like they're getting something from the power of the frequency or something. I don't know. You know, I know even more important, more important than diamonds and gold and that stuff, there's a mineral in Africa that has to be, you have to have it in your cell phone. If you don't have it, it won't work. And so they um, they buy thousands and thousands of acres in Africa and they have to dig in these mounds to get these black minerals for our cell phones. I don't mm. know what the fuck it is. Mm. Yeah. You know? No, I know. They do a lot That's of That's the things. new black gold. It's black stuff. Something black that they put in our cell phones. That's the new big thing that, you know what I mean, they're keeping a secret from us. It won't work without that mineral, and the phone won't work. Yeah, you definitely shocked because I ain't know that at all. Oh yes, <laughs> brother. It's very simple. Look in here. <laughs> Look in YouTube. I'm not. But some tell me this: some of the stuff, you, everything can't be believable on YouTube, oh, right? No, it's, this is simply. This is very. This is very mundane. It's very easy. Not complex at all. You see them niggas digging for it. They see them showing you this shit. This yeah. is what it is. <laughs> They're not hiding it. You just mm. gotta go look for it. Yeah, I'm making sure I'm headed back to Houston. Actually, after I leave here, so I'm gonna make sure I send y'all some of my uh, waves headphones. The bump box you probably gonna have a feel there, especially where you. So you know how the old boom boxes used to. Yeah. Be? They the new ones, but it, of course you know it's up to date. It's Bluetooth from the phone. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's different sizes. The big big one you probably gonna be able to carry because it should be. But yeah, it's, it's gonna remind you some shit. It's dope, That's dope, man. man. Tommy, why did you yeah. why did you get your teeth laced? I could take them out, but oh yeah, it, I, mean, yeah. I couldn't take mine out. Mine, I had to clip them in. I, had to, I don't know why I had to pull them out. I, I, my teeth would be knocked out, so they put the two teeth in there. So when I had, when I lost, when um, when they take out my gold, I had to kick them out with teeth. Oh damn! Yeah, I just I don't know. It's just part of our culture in Houston. Yeah. I had it since I was like nineteen. My mother had it, so I don't know why she had it from the south. So I had it. Yeah. I put it in my mouth when I was younger. Oh, so you're tired? You tied to the south then? Yeah, Virginia. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's a part of culture. I've had it since then. Now it's like, man, <laughs> I've had it so long. Some days I get up and just I don't put it in. Some days I do. I, I don't know, man, just as far as me being in the game as long as I have now, it's like sometimes I get up, I don't even put on jewelry, none of that shit, man. I, I just want to go out and I've looked at the history. I, like, I watch people. I watch them um, like African, you know, it's, it's in scripture, and, and they had gold teeth in there, you know, it's, AD time, so I didn't know really they had they didn't have cameras, but um, you know during 1910, since I saw pictures, you know 1902, 1890, you see people with gold teeth, white people, you see them they have gold teeth, they're arrogant and they cigars. I'm like, wow. And so I asked Cuss, who was like, he was born in 1908, my mentor. Mm. And I said, why did people wear gold teeth in there? He said it was a sign of wealth. Mm. People, you know, the sign of wealth. You got gold teeth, you big shot. And as you notice, most of the um, minorities had gold because they were insecure and they wanted people to feel that they were somebody, so they had gold teeth. Most of them had gold teeth, a lot of jewelry and stuff. Because yeah. you think, and in the 1890s, that's 30 years out of slavery. Mm. And they were millionaires. And some people have been millionaires just coming out of slavery. 30, 40 years out of slavery, somebody's a millionaire. You know what I mean? 50 years out of slavery. A black woman's a millionaire. That's incredible. <laughs> That's wild. Well, yeah, Trey, yeah. you want to let anybody know anything in particular that Where we you haven't at? talked about? How Where to get in touch with you? you? How can they uh, support Trey Day? First, we're gonna let them know they're gonna find my ass at the Tyson Ranch Fest. Yeah, but we gotta get that. You got you, <laughs> the kind you, you gotta um you have to know how to manipulate Trey Day in your name. You you manipulate your heart. See, your heart leaves you broke. I found that out too. We can help people and still keep our money. And give them more than we had when we were giving them money physically. That's what I had to find out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm definitely, one thing, my worry, my everything. So I'm definitely going to sit down and try and figure it out, man. Um, Cause it'll, kill, it'll kill you, you know. Cause when, you put your, when you put your effort, your, everything on the soul and all these people, and all these people are really um, dependent on you. That's awesome. It's awesome when they depend on you and you got it, man. That's a great feeling. But then you gotta keep feeling you gotta keep feeling feeding that fire. You gotta feed that beast. And that's when you need your supporters, your sponsors to help you feed that beast. That's just a write off for them. They're gonna get more back in return. That's that's nothing. That's nothing for them. Mm. That's money they're allowed to give away in their company and won't be taxed for. 
So that's going to be my goal, man. Yeah. It's probably too late now, you know, since never, it's a month. Hey, never too listen, late, bro. That's a defeatist thinking. Never too late. People, listen, people been in jail for 30, 40 years, come out and they hit it. It's never too late. The only reason they don't make it because they give up. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a grind, but never give up. Some people are so close, and they're so close, they just got to cross the street, but they give up before they get a chance to cross the street. They're afraid to get by a car after they've been so far. It doesn't matter if I get by a car. Now I came too far, so fuck it. Yeah. You're right on that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make sure we figure this shit out like I got to, man. And other than you're that, man. You're a leader, man, brother. You know, you're a leader. In yeah, the time, absolutely. In the time of doom, everybody leads the leader. You know what I mean? But you got to keep your fucking faith and don't give up. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's right. Hearing that just reiterated it for me. Yeah? They do leave you. Because being a leader ain't always on the right side of the fence, man. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh-uh. Sometimes mm. you don't know you're a leader, but you just, you're leading. Sometimes you don't know how to lead, but you know it's the right thing to do. You know, if I do the other thing, this is wrong. I'm laying down from some bitch-ass niggas. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. That's so right on, Mike. Have you ever been to jail? Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I was young, I ended up. <coughs> I was, Captain, this is some incredible. This motherfucker been to jail and they gave him a tray day. <laughs> Mother, they won't give me. I done made millions. They made millions and billions for companies and cities. Man, Mike they day. won't give me no motherfucker. They won't give me a minute. <laughs> they won't give me a minute of a day, motherfucker. Shit. Yeah, I was I was 17, 18. Oh, that's and, beautiful. And this go back to I'm around to pride. Fuck, they don't give a fuck you're a felon. <laughs> Come on, nigga. We're going to give you the red ribbon. Well, you, you know, I, I think the thing with, <laughs> with me is I don't know what it is about me. I'm just the one that it seems like everybody gravitate to. You know why? They don't, they don't look at none of the, the gang, me being affiliated with gangs or the streets in. They overlook all that. They just like, See, man, this you, broke. You're what this they trope. call a rational nigga. You can be talked to. Some black so fucking emotional. You get so emotional, and then we start looking at this motherfucking white, and then we start thinking about slavery, and we start thinking about our mother and all this shit. They motherfucking answers to dinner, and fuck you. <laughs> and that's just how it is. But you, it's cool. You're kind. You're nice. You explain. You talk to people. Yeah, but one thing they know, sense. I stand for what I stand oh, I for, and I'm yeah, gonna go to the But you're not yeah. no, you're not no wild man like me. I'm yeah. fucking wild. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're smart. You're real good. You're real good for that. Absolutely, man. You're killing it. It's awesome to see that. Against all laws, man. Could you, you, you ever think so an artist can have a number one record, right? And can come back with the next album and don't have a big radio hit. Mm -hmm. Their career fade away. So imagine being banned worldwide and no radio. Not even, I can't even tour. Because if you're a promoter, you can't go advertise. So imagine me still being here standing strong 10 years later. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, right? You're kicking ass, right? You're standing up, but you got to always look at it like this. It can always be worse. Definitely. Definitely. It can always that. be worse. I used to tell people that, and they don't understand. I'd be like, man, it can always be worse, because you got to think about that person who ain't going to have their next meal, who probably ain't even got a, a spot under the bridge they can go to. That They're just on, on their last, last leg always. That's why I don't take much for granted, man. See, but you, you, you're a rebel still. You know, rebels are going to always have to fight. You know, you always have to fight. You know, you got to sometimes, you got to rest sometimes. You got to love. You got to take care of the babies. You got to do some things that, you know, that are humanity, you know. But you ever get you the feeling if you time. don't do it, if you, you ever get the, when you love doing it, if you don't do it, you just feel bad for me not being out on front line in the field all the time. Oh, yeah, you could be front line. It's nothing about being no, front No, I'm saying if I take time to go do me on my own and something happened, I feel hard, but if I don't stop what I'm doing to go jump front line. Well, you should, but how are you going to lead those people if you can't even lead your own family? You're not fucking with them and functioning with them and taking care of them, too. You know, that's part of a leader, too. They need to be a part of it. You know, if you're on the front line, they need to be with you then, but you got to be with them. You know what I mean? Without them, there's no you. You can't serve these people without them. That's your backbone. That's all you need. That makes you motivate. That makes you want to get up in the morning. You know? Yeah. I feel that. That I do. Maybe I'll just be in, I'll be in stubborn. That probably Yeah, but we, we got to be objective. When you're a leader, 
you gotta be objective and being objective is the weird stuff because it's almost godly like because you have to um you have to live your life and you're not involved with how you live your life it's not it's not your life you know what i mean it's not your fault if somebody shoots you it's not your fault if you get upset or something it's not your life you're not responsible for your life but you have to live it so to speak you know, you can't think about you, I can't make this move. If I do this, I might get hurt. If I do this, I might get arrested. And it's not your life. If you get arrested, it's not your responsibility. But you still have to live your life. Yeah. I feel that. A lot of us are afraid to live because we have laws and rules that people created. There's no right, there's no wrong. People made that up. Who said it's right if you attack me? Who said it's wrong if you attack me? Somebody that made up a law and said, I don't like that. That's wrong if you do that. Even be somebody like you did that. Made up a law. I didn't like that law. I'm in position. I'm going to make that a law. Do that, you're going to get punished. Mm -hmm. Somebody may have did it to a friend of yours or something, a family member. I didn't like that. So if you do that again, you're fucked. That's all it is. There's no right and there's no wrong. We made laws. Live life. Yeah. That's what we're going to do, man. It's going to be over quick. You know, I remember being 19. I remember being champ. I thought it would last ever. It's over quick. What the fuck happened? And then you get 52 and then you start saying, fuck, it's almost over. I got to prepare to see God do. Soon what do I do? I got to start living different. I got to start eating different. I got to see God. I got to be at my best. Maybe not now, but that comes to your mind. Yeah, I, I got a little, I got a little, a little yeah. while though. If, if God say the same. Yeah, you know, there's no doubt. I didn't, you know, and I feel like uh, another thing with him, as far as him speaking to God, he just got his hand over me because even with that, like even when I got shot, I got shot directly in my back behind my heart. But I don't know if you've seen, you, you, did you see, uh, it's a video of me pulling the bullet out by myself. This is an alien. I'm nah. just, nigga, this is an alien, nigga. <laughs> he pull it up and show Michael. Uh, Can you pull that up? Oh, that's some dark. But the point yeah. that I'm saying is, <laughs> he just, you know, it, it, I haven't been in so many situations and I always come out of them. Why man. did you get shot? Uh, I, I believe that wasn't meant for me when I actually yeah. got shot, yeah. But when I got shot, you know, three people got killed. Another one had got paralyzed. You just put um, Trey pulled a bullet from his arm. And it's so crazy. When I got shot, they take me to the um, the hospital. It's like, damn, there's 200 niggas outside. The hospital spooked. They don't know if they'd uh, hurt me, but the people act in actuality are there for me. They end up shutting the hospital down and sent me on my way. I went home and healed myself. What do you do when somebody shoots you and you see them and it's a possibility he's going to get killed? What do you do? What do you say? What do you say? Now, fuck, that nigga got to get done. I, I, what do I you would do? say I couldn't really say on this podcast. Oh, I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> oh, this shit is nasty, nigga. But nah, but look. Oh, dude, look. no, I don't Come want on, to get Mike, that nigga, shit. Come on, Mike, nigga, you savage. You got to look. But this was going to uh, trip you out, remember? Oh, this is some nasty shit. Look like a finger, motherfucker. But look. Oh, so look, this is how I know God got me. Look at that bullet, Mike. Uh, it's not wow. even, it's, it's still it's, whole, just yeah, about. It didn't break. It at didn't all. Come out the shell. Ah, oh, that hole is a motherfucker, though. That's hollow right there. You're wow, like God. Superman. You took the fucking bullet out. <laughs> Fuck. That's uh, like, that's like look, a Terminator. Terminator do some shit like that. Shout out my nephew, uh, Nico, because he was like, man, just let me record. I'm like, record it for what? Because, you know, when you have <laughs> bullets, nephew. like, they, they push yourself out. You know what I'm saying? Like, they move. Yeah, it autom it, it's going to find its way to the surface. You know? mm. He's like, man, let me just, just let me record it. He recorded that shit, man. That shit went. That, that's but what was, I learned what viral was. But it was hot, huh? Bullet was hot? What you mean? Was it hot inside of you? Uh, burning you? Nah, I couldn't even. I honestly couldn't remember the feeling of it. It was large than my rotator cup. So mm. it just. It was just always throbbing. You know what I'm saying? Like when certain weather, when it's cold and shit, that my shit like is just. That like a big shit. Was that uh, nine or was that 45? Yeah, I think it was either 45 or Listen, 40. Um, how do you take that? You know, 45 hit you. You come like um, 90 degree, and you get hit by the 45, it'll push you back. Mm. And it's so crazy. When I when I got hit, I remember I ended up stumbling over. But I, I got up and made it to a car and kept it moving, man. Kept wow. it moving. Oh, man, thank God. Oh, yeah, definitely thank yeah, God, Thank man. God. Yes. What do you so think what, about God? What do you think about God? I mean, that. I, man, I believe he's the most important key to my life. And I'm going to say and something that I've learned. 
my whole life I've been loyal to the streets and niggas in the streets. So the way I look at it is if I can risk all that every day for, for people I, I, I say I love in the streets and in the human form, why I can't be as loyal to him? So every everything I do is revolved around him. Like I'm just a loyal person, period. So same way I'm loyal to everybody else, I'm going to be just a loyal to him. And I don't always get the outcome I want. I pray every night at midnight, no matter what. I could be getting ready to go on stage. My fans know me enough to where they like, this is time. He he do his midnight prayers. And um, when I do it, a lot of stuff I pray for don't always come the the way I want it. Sometimes people may die that I'll be praying, like, please let them live. But at the end of the day, my loyalty still remains with him. I mean, because I feel like, he got me through a lot of stuff, man. When 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 it seemed like hitting rock bottom with nobody there. How do you perceive God? Do you do you look at God as he is he from do um the wise man create God or do you think God is your own individual source? Honestly, I I, I couldn't say. I I, I you haven't ever looked think at a about How you got here? How you got here? Who are you? Where you going when you live here? You leave here? I think about a, a lot of stuff as far as when I leave here, what it's going to be like, but you kind of hit that dead end road at some point where you just, you don't really know. It's just, I think I'm at a point where whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. Do you think like we just die? Like, you know, we no longer will exist. It's like, boom, we're dead. And the energy that you and I are expressing right now, that right now you know what you're going to say right now before you even say that. You think through that die, that energy that's right now you're ready to answer me with, that you know what you're going to say and we can't hear you. You think that die? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I honestly think this is me. I think if we actually left physical form, mm-hmm. I honestly I don't see it being over. <sighs> I I don't, but I, I, I mean, like you just can't, right? Yeah. It could be arrogant. That may be something. denial. Yeah, that yeah, may. Yeah, because yeah. every now and then I look at um, dead plants or dead flowers and I say. Is it over for this? Is this just a shell? Where is the essence of the flower? Did it, it die? Where did it go? Did it just go blank or blacked out? Or is it just hovering over? The essence is so powerful. Does it just black out and no longer exist? How's that work? Yeah, and you know we'll never know because we know. But then you know what? Don't what? See, I, and I believe when people say they actually talk to people and and. In spiritual form, like I just don't play with that type of stuff. I stay far away from it. But if they are able to talk to people in, in that way, then it's definitely something after death. In in, in that aspect, if it's that's, true, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, even the physical form doesn't just go blip, get blipped out of existence. You know, our physical form, if left whole, will decay and rot and go to feed. The soil yeah. and plants and the earth, it'll go back into the source, even our physical form. So our spiritual form is definitely swirling around in the ether somewhere. Maybe that's why we we always swap at insects and flies and ants and shit because we know they're going to eat us at the end. End of life, they're going to devour us. You know, when I was young, they used to say, when we die, that's what we come back at. Well, that's funny. Um... We heard that too on some of these seance. You come back as a tree, a bug, an ant, a rock. Imagine being a fucking rock. <laughs> might be cool, dude. Might be so much stimulation and so much fucking, ooh. <laughs> yeah, you right? might just get baked by the sun. Yeah, I, if, if it's true, I hope I come back as something strong. Yeah. No That's doubt. the whole thing, right? It's, we live in our egos. We have no control. We can't imagine thinking about living with no control. Imagine everything you think is no, it means nothing. You have to wait for it to happen. Then you feel helpless. Oh, that's the cost. We have to feel helpless in order to worship. That's mm. the only re- that's the only reason we're gonna worship unless we have unless we're at the end of the fucking boat. We're going to prison, and even when we get in prison, we may not even pray as much. But the fact that we're going, we're gonna pray a million times within that time we get to prison. The duration it takes to get to prison before we get there, there's gonna be a million prayers sent to God. What was your main thought, Mike, when you? When you was coming home, you was just thinking more of I'm finna, I'm finna change, or you feeling I'm, I'm finna prove motherfuckers wrong. I'm finna get my second chance after you went to jail. Like, what was your thought process coming out like? Revenge. Yeah. Yeah, I was stupid. 
I stayed in that place for three years, getting prepared for revenge, not thinking about love or anything. Who were you going to get revenge against, Mike? Everybody that laughed at me. Mm. I'm a fucking clown. Everybody that laughed at me and said things about me. Uh, a fucking had some negative to say about me, or else somebody friend had something, or somebody put their two cents in, or somebody said something against me, and somebody said something for me, but I didn't like the way they said it for me. Mm. It's everybody. Fuck you, or everybody. Wow. I all had them all in my head. I couldn't wait to get out. I was going to flash my money, my belt, my car, my house, my plane, my boats. Look at me, motherfucker. I'm a god. I was just a fool. <laughs> just a fool. Just a fool. That's so beautiful. Man. I was just curious to know what your thought process yeah, was. Yeah, I think it was everybody's fault. It wasn't my fault. Everybody else's fault. Yeah. Everybody else's fault I'm in here. Ain't no, ain't, I had nothing to do with it. And nothing to do with it. Everybody else fucked them motherfuckers. They hated me all along. They were all jealous of me. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Mm. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Who yeah. came to visit you? You had friends Everybody. Come? Everybody. Yeah. I mean, that. I had more. I had so many visits. I, ain't, I couldn't have time to do my jobs and stuff. So I had to tell them, listen, come at this time where I could do it. I could have too many visitors. Wow. I had so many visitors. I, um, some visits I used couldn't even. It's just too many. You was know? it surprising who came to visit you? Or did you, or most Listen, of them right, you knew? I was a good nigga when I was on the streets. I was a real good guy. I'm always generous, so it's cool. So yeah. a lot of people came. Yeah. Everybody who. M Listen, Michael Jackson's mother, his father came. Wow. Uh, Whitney came. Great. Bobby came. Who else? LL Cool J came. Who else? Wow, Ice man. Cube. His name, Tupac came. Who else came? Fucking LL Cool There's a bunch of motherfuckers. Actors, wow. celeb I don't know. There's a lot of people came. What would you it's, talk about? Huh? What would you guys talk about? First of all, they better have some money for that fucking machine. Or else I'm getting the <laughs> fuck up and leaving for the visit. So I let them all know, have, bring money with you. Make sure you have money for the machine. So um, if you don't got no money, I'm getting up. I can't stand there fucking for two or three hours and they don't eat no shit from the machine. So um, To get some snacks? Yeah. That machine? Yeah. Yeah, the vending machine. I mean, because that's the... I, you know, I, I got a brother doing two life sentences. I go there, I got to have that roll yeah, that of quarters to yeah. make oh, sure wow. they got snacks. So yeah, that money, yep. Yeah. And I used to get, um, oh, listen. So I'm in prison, right? And people are saying, write me letters. I'm getting like 100 pieces of letters a day, right? They don't like what happened to me. So I'm in there with a guy that's been in prison for 30 years, right? So he said, Mike, he's reading these letters to some of these girls. And so he said, hey, Mike. You don't know how to read, do you? I said, I'm not a reading, nigga. What the fuck you mean I don't know how to read? He said, no, no, I don't mean that. You can read, um, you know, basic reading, but I'm saying you don't know how to read the letters, what people are saying with, you know, you know, he was saying um, the cryptic message, so to speak. He said, I didn't understand what that was. He had to tell me. He said the cryptic message. And he said, Mike, listen, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Bing, you're in jail, Mike. You need money. So he was explaining. He said, like, Mike. Tell every one of these people to send you $100 a week or even a month. And so I did it because he wrote the letters because I wasn't that much of a pen and paper guy. So he wrote the letters for me, and he said, yeah, Mike, you want to say it? And, he said, and then when the first um, delivery came and around 30 or 40 people sent, came in with 100 bucks, I got scared. Oh, shit, they're going to catch us. We're going to get locked up. They're going to give me more time. I, got pan I panicked. I panicked. I just panicked. I panicked. I, just, I said, I can't do this. I, I was just... um. I was lying to these people. I needed money. I had fucking nine hundred. What I had ninety thousand dollars on my book. But I was, my friend just did that dark shit. He just did that dark shit and said, "Tell him to send you a hundred dollars." And I yeah. said, "All these people sent me money," and I just freaked out. I said, "Man, I'm gonna go to jail." Cause somebody had just went to jail. Cause I gave him a letter, and he told the girl that he was me, and the girl was sending him jury and oh, money yeah. and stuff. He told and us then, that so, story. Then they told me, Mike, go visit the girl. The girl's here. She wants to meet you. Go down there and visit. I said, I ain't visiting her. Cause he, she <sighs> gave him all the jury, and he thought she thought that he was me. So eventually, she told the people that I took all her money and stuff. So they brought me down. Said wasn't me. And then eventually, they found him. Yeah. Because he had the jury and stuff, and they shipped him up, and he had to get up out of there. Fuck. He would have get another charge. Bro, 90000 It ain't shit you could do with 90000 oh, yeah. oh, you'd be surprised. Well, if you, if, you, if you break it down to share with Listen, more. Listen, no, this is what you do. You got 90000 on your book, you're in prison. You're doing time, all right? How many guards are they there? You send money to their house. Boom, 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 boom. It's a wrap. Oh, you have it your way. Yeah. Boom, boom. It's a, it's a wrap. I'm fucking. I'm doing everything. <laughs> real, real. I'm, I'm leaving like a you fucking king. You took care of the guards. Yeah, I'm living like a king. Mm. 
It's a trip, Mike. Wait, Trey wait, love wait. everybody. You need to be Trey Love, man. Trey, Trey love. Truth, Trey Love. <laughs> Trey Love everybody. Trey Love. This is love. Until they love get on the bad side. Nah, Fuck them. That, yeah. No, that's love too. Because if they get on your bad side, you're just checking them to let them know that you're doing wrong shit. Don't fuck with me. That's too. That's love too. Okay. You got. You can't say it's bad side. You don't mm. got nothing bad. You have to look at no. None of this is bad. All this is done in good perspective. Don't look at it because that's gonna put them. That's gonna put a negative mark on your psychology. This is bad. <sighs> fuck you, mean This is bad. This ain't bad. This is love, nigga. Don't do this shit no more. That's not bad. This is good. You gotta come out of your character. Someone. It sounds bad, but you're doing bad in the, in the name of good. <laughs> but it's not bad. You know, it's not bad. Mike's on fire today. No, but it's not. He's not bad. I guess that's what happened when you kiss the the, the right people with the right people, man. It's it's definitely a bliss. I learned, you know. Because people are ruling and they never ruled before, so they think that's bad. Oh, I shouldn't have said that to him. No, they got to get on the fucking check. They didn't hear that. Yeah, get on top of your fucking game, motherfucker. Hey, nigga, chill out. Yeah. They got to be. So true. Because that's what part of making an army about. Once you hear that command, you you know the command. You know no hesitation. You have to do the command. Hmm. It's not like you're a fucking dictator or nothing, but everybody has a job. What are you here for? Everybody have a job and everybody have to take what is he here for? What is he you gotta take some commands. So I gotta take commands. Hmm. Definitely. Never too old to learn. No. no I, oh, listen, man. <laughs> I listen. I thought I listen. Let's go with the toad now. I thought I knew everything. I had every kind of bitch. I had every kind of car. I had, I, nigga, I thought I had it. I've been all over the world. Listen, I took this fucking, I don't know, ancient medicine, ancient drug. I took the toe. I realized I didn't never do shit. I ain't nothing. I ain't with the nut. I ain't do shit. I had nothing but an ego. You just thought I was a bad nigga. Sometimes somebody take your ego, you'll feel like a bitch. You feel like a fucking, man, you feel like you motherfucker can fuck you. You just feel like with your ego goes, <gasps> feel like you fucking gonna die. Got nothing, nigga. When I came out from under that shit, I was like, what the fuck was that? I want to do it again. <laughs> I want to do it, nigga. It took all of your. It just take all away. It takes all away, all that fucking ego. You thinking you're bad? Imagine, imagine going in your life, all your life. You, you know you're bad. You done beat a bunch of act niggas. That you done shot from you done did shit, and all of a sudden, <gasps> you're nothing. Your ego is going. You're scared. You don't even know what you're scared. You don't even see anything. You're scared. That thing going. You should go on. You're scared. You're scared. You know, we need our ego. We have our ego because it's for a defense mechanism. Mm. When motherfuckers put us down, our ego say, nah, you ain't no bitch ass nigga. You show me, you know what I mean? It tells you that. It protects you so much. But then it gets a little carried away sometimes. Yeah. And like people always say, get rid of the ego. I think the ego is good. You just got to be, um, you got to be worked with, I guess. Balance, though. Yeah, no balance. No one to turn it on at all. Home. Yeah, the ego's good. Tuned. Everybody, all, all the philosophers and all the writers all say the ego is bad. The ego is not the baddest it's made out to be. I don't believe that. I agree. There's a purpose, for sure. Yeah, definitely. We wouldn't have it if it wasn't. Yeah. And some of us that don't have it, people got to give it to us. People got to teach us how to have it. Yeah, because you need to yeah. have some. Yeah. Because nobody's, born, nobody's born with it. You gotta, somebody yeah. teaches you it. Somebody, there's always somebody to teach you it. You get it from somebody. I think you're right, too, Mike, about the ego, because if you don't have enough ego, then you don't stand up for yourself. You won't and stand you get up for fucked yourself. your yeah. whole life, and you're nothing. You gotta believe it's just so something. You, you you're here for a reason. Ego. We're here for a reason. What do you think you're here for? What's your purpose? You can't be here for nothing. God's not gonna put us here for nothing. Mm-hmm. Even though some people believe they died for nothing, they've done nothing in their life, you're not here for nothing. I, can't, I, won't, I won't accept the fact that people are useless. I used to think that shit, but I, I won't accept that no more. That people yeah. are useless, because I was useless. I was one of those people that I thought were useless. So I can't, I can't think people are useless. Because I think people are better than me, and I can't think if I think I'm good, I, they got to be much better than me. Hmm. It's awesome. Great pod, brother. This is good yeah. stuff. We here with a guy that's sacrificing his shit, fucking his shit up. Let me listen. The name of the game, your money belongs to your children from when you're not here no more. Don't be giving it away and all that shit. These people got to help you and pay for this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Worst come to worst, you go on a fucking ad and you put down what these guys do for movies now. What they do for movies, they, they uh, my friend did it. They write letters out and they ask people to donate for them to finance their movie and they and they do it. They don't even know her. They do it. This is a, I need my money to sponsor my movie. I don't know how they do it, but they put it out there, lease or something, and then the people are sending them money. They don't even know them. They never did a movie before. 
There's good people out there, even though they make bad mistakes sometimes. There's good people. I won't believe that people are bad. I used to think that shit too. And that's what I met is bad people. Because I made them bad because I thought they were bad. <laughs> well, we're going to work on that. That's my new goal. Yeah. Hopefully next time I, I hit you, hey, Mike, I got blah, blah, blah sponsors. You know what I'm saying? There's good people out there, man. You just got to believe in it. You know what I mean? And believe in yourself. Definitely. You know, you got to believe that shit. I ain't believing nobody. I should be dead. I should have died of an OD. I should have died of AIDS. I should have all this shit, nigga. I ain't believe. I ain't give a fuck. I'm still here. I can't believe I'm here. I might as well try to live now. I tried to die. Did it work? Did it work? So I'm living. Let's see what happens. Let's see where this shit takes me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, real talk. Let's yeah, see where this yeah, shit's gonna yeah, take yeah. me. I tried to kill fun. myself. It didn't work. So let's see where this fucking yeah, shit's gonna go. It's amazing, man. Like it's amazing. It's just real, dude. You want to take us out, brother? Yeah, we out of here. This is another episode of Hot Boxing. Awesome night. We had an awesome guest. And like, you don't have anything you want to say to these people? Like, get anywhere, get anything? No, nah, no. Nah. All right, the, cool. The stuff coming um, definitely make sure y'all support whatever y'all see me having going on. And definitely stand up and support Nipsey and his family. You know, the mayor. Did you know um, Pimp C? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my brother. May he rest in peace, man. Pimp, real, real. Real good person and outspoken. Yeah. You know, man, it's so crazy. I got a long list of following shows just from from Pimp to in Houston, you know, we lost a lot like Fat Pat, Big Hawk, DJ Screw, Big Mo, Three Two, Grace, man, Mafia all a lot of our legends are gone. You know, it it it's just it's crazy, man. Definitely crazy. Human beings don't live too long. It's like every, like, bugs, like trees, like certain, a certain fly, a certain, I don't know if it's a fruit fly, it lives for only three hours. Within three hours, you know what it has to do. It has to fucking develop its mind, it has to develop its heart, it has to find somebody it likes to mate with, and then it dies. And when do after that, raise the kids, and then it dies. How, how fast that, it must be, um, the metabolism right. must be working so fast. Three hours. You got to do so much shit in three hours. I pray I don't come back being that. <laughs> I'm going to be mad as shit. But you think that fly might think three hours is an eternity. <sighs> it's a possibility. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. Well, he must be working on, he working on high frequency. Though. Yes, yes, very Everything's high. Everything's fucking hot. Very <laughs> Fuck. He burning so much frequency. energy. It's yeah. <laughs> man. <laughs> That's it, brother. Oh, Thanks, Mike. Shit. Thanks, Trey. Okay, yeah. Trey Love, we got Great you. Great episode. Yeah. All right, so, everybody. So I guess that's my new nickname for Mike, Trey Love. Yeah. Trey <laughs> Love, dude. That's your alter ego. Your love, man. Yeah. You know, always keep with you. Married, Trey? Nah. Nah. Wish I need to find a good woman. Eventually, you will. You yeah. know, and that's an art too. That's an art too. You know, um. Most people like um, I try to explain to my son not to be like my father, like to be like your father. I I fuck for sport, you know what I mean. But you, but the dick is meant for you to get some money. You're supposed to use that dick to get some money, and get some prestige to make you know what I mean to better your life. That's what your dick is for. You know what I mean. It's not just for the breed. It's supposed to breed um, respectfully and profitably. But we are so crazy about to stick it in that dick. <laughs> <laughs> Good end. It's a good end. Thanks, Trey. Great episode, Mike. One. We're out. <laughs> no, but that's real talk, man. We're supposed to get money. <laughs>